Hello and welcome to our video on setting up SLAs or service level agreements as they're also known. You've probably already taken a look at the priorities and priority hierarchy video and if you haven't I'd recommend go ahead and taking a look at that one because the way the priorities and priority hierarchy are configured will impact how the service level agreements function as well. In this video we're going to go ahead and take a look at service level agreements and how they're configured and as you'll notice we are already logged into track it and in the configuration section. If you don't remember how to get to configuration, it's pretty easy. Uh, once you're logged into track it, you just go in and click on the menu on the left hand side and select configuration. The easiest way to get to SLAs is to look on the left hand side of the configuration menu here. Click on SLAs and business rules and you'll see the service level agreements option is right here in the top center. So we're going to click on that and click on service level agreements. Now there's a description here at the top to explain service level agreements and we have a new button where we can create a new one and then you'll notice this would be a list of all the service level agreements we have there is an inactive flag here just like we have in most other areas of the product so that you can disable service level agreements if you're no longer using them so i'm going to go ahead and click new to add a new sla we're going to enter a title and then we're going to take a look at some of the options here at the top so there's a start date which defaults to the date and time that you're entering the SLA. And then there's an end date. So service level agreements in Trackit can have a finite time, or you can set this out you know, 10 years to make sure it's going to last for quite a while. So if it's something that you're going to continue to have all the time and you want to make sure it never gets disabled, you're just going to want to set this out to a really far off year in the future. Sometimes you have an SLA which is time bound. It's only for a certain contract engagement or for a certain scenario that's going on on your network. Of course, you can put the expiration date in for that and it'll become inactive once that time comes. Now there's an IT owner option you can select. This is just a drop down list of the technicians in your system. So you can go ahead and select who owns the SLA. This status here describes what status the SLA is currently in. So we're gonna set it to draft because we're creating a new one. You can enter a description here, which is handy in case other people take a look at your SLA, they'll understand what it's doing. And then the first thing we're going to have to define once we're done with the header part here is the goals for our service level agreement. So the service level agreement is based on the priority. So let's say we have a service level agreement in our organization where anything that's related to a network outage, for example, is going to be a critical priority and we need it to be corrected within two hours. So we're going to pick our critical priority because that one has a due date of two hours. Notice it pulls in the other information from the priority as well. If you've looked at this priority before, you'll remember these values are in there. And just because this expected due duration is two hours, that doesn't mean that's the only trigger here that's going to affect this SLA. We're going to have criteria and milestones that also impact this SLA that we're going to go over here in a moment, and you'll see how those impact it. So for the purposes of this example, I'm going to go ahead and select a lower level priority so that my expected due duration is lower. I'm going to go ahead and select low. That's a 40 hour due date duration. So that gives me plenty of time to set some other thresholds and other milestones in between now and that 40 hours. So I'm going to use low. Then I'm going to click on define criteria. Now I need to define what is going to set this particular SLA. I'm going to go ahead and pick a category. That's most commonly what people use. And I'm going to say category equals. And let's use something else because we picked a 40 hour window. So let's just say I have a problem with a software application. So that's not necessarily going to be critical depending on the application, but let's go ahead and pick that. So category equals applications. So if a ticket comes into the track it system and the category is applications, it's going to trigger this SLA immediately. If I want to add other criteria, just click this little add button here on the right and I can add other criteria. So I could say, let's think of another one and department, let's go with department equals We'll say IT department. So then we're going to go down to milestones. 
And you'll notice that I can't add a new milestone here yet. That's because these milestones are dependent upon this SLA existing. So I'm going to go ahead and save my SLA first. Now you'll notice my SLA is saved and it's in my list. I'm going to open it back up. I'm going to go back to my milestones. So I'm going to click new to add a milestone to show you what this means. So we have to give the milestone a name. Now I'm going to define the conditions to which this milestone is going to occur. So a milestone, if you think about it, think about mile markers on the highway. You start off at a certain spot and then you have a destination you're trying to get to. And the mile markers along the way are the things you pass on your way from the beginning of the trip to the end of the trip. So a milestone basically is the same thing. So these are items that are going to pass between the time the ticket is entered and the time that some date in the future is reached. And the reason I say some date in the future is because you have a few options here. So in your drop down here, you have expected due date and time, you have expected response date and time, and expected fixed date and time. So depending on those values that are in the ticket, you can trigger different things to happen along the way. So let's say, for example, our due date on this ticket was 40 hours from our uh, low priority, right? So we're concerned that if 20 hours has gone by and the ticket's not complete yet, then we're going to want to send some kind of reminder or let somebody know, hey, you know, you need to make sure you take care of this. So we're going to come over here and we're going to say if the available time before the expected due date and time reaches 20 hours, then we're going to define some action. So again, the ticket was put in, it was set for a low priority, the expected due date and time is 40 hours from then. If we get within 20 hours of that expected due date and time and we're still open, then we're going to define an action. So let's take a look at some of the actions you can do. I can send a notification, or I can update the record, or I could use this plus sign and add multiple conditions and do both. So maybe at the 20 hour mark there, I just want to send a notification. So I click send notification, click notification details. This is that same type of email template that we've seen before. So this message is basically going to say, hey, dear technician, you're halfway to your due date. You need to go ahead and take care of this. So we're going to cancel out of that. Of course, we could always say we want to update the record because maybe we get to that point halfway there and nothing's been done and we just want to assign it to somebody else. So we're going to update the record. We're going to select ticket. We're going to select edit fields. And here we're going to go ahead and map our fields that we want to update. So we might say assign to technician, we're going to say use a value, and we're going to go and assign this to the administrator. Notice mapping for ticket ID is not specified. These milestones work much like the business rules do. So same thing applies here as applies in a business rule. When you're going to update a ticket, you need to map the ticket ID before you can update any of the fields. So we're going to start out here by selecting ticket ID. We're going to say use a value from the current record, and we are going to say ticket ID. Then we're going to add our field we want to update, and we're going to change that to assign to technician, select a value, and we're going to select administrator. Pay attention to this center option. This is the same in business rules. You have use a value or an expression, or use a value from the current record. And you'll notice that the options in the right-hand drop-down are going to change depending on which one you pick. I'm going to cancel out of here. Okay, so let's say in this case I want to set another milestone that's closer to the expected due date. I could do that as well. I could say within 10 hours, or I could do it within 5 hours, or within 1 hour. So I can set up multiple checkpoints along the way between the time the SLA is first enabled on the ticket all the way to when it's due. Not only do we have the option to set a milestone if the available time before a field occurs, we also have the option of saying if the elapsed time since occurs. So here we can set up another milestone that says if the expected due date and time is passed by an hour or two hours or three hours, we can set up multiple milestones for that as well. So what you'll notice here is you can set up as many milestones as you want here for each SLA. So if it's a critical SLA, I may still select a priority that's much lower, 
but then I'm going to use my milestones to really customize how that SLA gets handled. Or I may create a generic priority that says priority medium handled by SLA. And anytime an SLA gets fired, it tr triggers that priority. And then depending on the SLA, the milestones drive the service level that has to occur. So you can do a lot with the milestones as far as notification and ticket updates and all of that stuff along the way before any of those fields that we looked at, if we open this up again, before any of these occur or after any of those occur. And you can customize the days, hours, minutes, and seconds of each of those thresholds. Notice how there's a last modified as well. So you could even say if the elapsed time since the ticket was last modified reaches two days, then do a certain action. So that's another way that you could handle this type of thing. So you may have low priority tickets where if no one touches it for a couple of weeks, then you close it, you email the requester and say, this has been closed due to inactivity. If you want to open it back up again, give us a call back and that's it. And we close the ticket. So you can do those kinds of things with the SLA milestones here in Trackit. So this has been an overview of how to use service level agreements and the milestones along with priorities in Trackit. For more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right hand corner inside Trackit. Some other useful resources are the Trackit community where you can talk with other Trackit users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. And for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.